knows a lot about all kinds of stuff, Professor Dave explains. In the previous tutorial, we talked about how governments attempt to grow economies by doing things to increase productivity, often with great success. However, sometimes things don't work out as intended, as governments can do things that actually harm economic growth. Let's look at five specific ways governments can mess up economies. Number one, overtaxation. Taxation is a powerful tool that the government uses to pay for public goods and services. Taxes give the government the money it needs to operate. However, it is important to think about who actually bears the burden of a tax. Taxes can create disincentives and often behavior that discourages investment. So while governments absolutely need taxes to pay for obligations, since it's the primary way they collect money, they also need to be careful not to tax too much. Let's look at two distinct ways taxes can end up harming economic growth. The first is increasing prices for ordinary consumers. For example, suppose the government collects a gasoline tax of 50 cents per gallon from gas stations. At first, you might assume that the tax burden is only on the gas stations. However, in response to the tax, gas stations may increase the price of gas. Therefore, consumers will also carry the burden of the tax. When policymakers consider creating a new tax, they must consider the incidence of a tax, or the final burden of a tax. This is because producers often pass on the burden of a tax to consumers. The second is discouraging domestic investment. Simply put, if taxes make the cost of doing business too high in one country, companies will take their business elsewhere. For example, suppose the government increases the corporate income tax rate, which is a tax on business profits. In response, a company might move its headquarters to another country to avoid paying the higher corporate tax rate. In fact, the company will likely move to a country with no corporate tax. Back in 2017, Google shifted $23 billion to Bermuda. At the time, the United States had a 21% corporate income tax rate, while Bermuda had no corporate income tax. So whenever a policymaker proposes either a new tax or a higher tax rate, they must consider the degree to which that change might scare off producers or consumers. Number two, too much or too little regulation. Whenever governments regulate an economy, they are manipulating a free market. This can have both positive and negative effects on an economy. It's probably easier to understand the negative effects of regulation. First, highly regulated industries can make it difficult for competitive markets to form. If a company has to spend lots of money keeping up with regulations, it may hurt their profits. More importantly, a large company or corporation may be able to handle spending extra money to keep up with regulations, but a brand new company starting out won't be able to. This results in fewer companies in a market, which often results in higher prices for consumers. More government regulation also means more bureaucracy, and therefore more government spending. This can lead to government inefficiency, corruption, and increased taxes. Too little regulation can also hurt economic growth. To understand why that is, let's look at why regulations can be a good thing. First, regulations can raise industry standards, resulting in higher quality goods and services. For example, because governments often put in place strict requirements for food processing and preparation, consumers are more confident in buying packaged food than they would be otherwise. Second, if implemented correctly, regulations can actually increase competition in a marketplace. While this seems counterintuitive, regulation can limit the power of corporations that are dominating a market. Third, regulations protect consumers. Certain goods and services can be harmful to consumers or even deadly. However, that has not stopped producers from providing them and profiting from them over the years. In the early 1900s, radium was a popular cure for many ailments and was sold around the world. However, it soon became known that it caused cancer, and only after governments stepped in to ban it were companies forced to stop selling it. Number three, lack of investment in infrastructure, education, and technology. As we saw in the previous tutorial, governments support economic growth simply by helping create capital. Often this is by redirecting public funds to invest in major public projects or providing public schools and supplementary public school programs. 
economists have found that if governments don't invest in infrastructure, education, and technology, wealth inequality worsens and economic growth decreases. Number four, lack of enforcement of contracts. As we also learned in the previous tutorial, private property is usually protected through contracts. Governments ensure that if someone breaks a contract with you, you can take them to court to resolve the issue. Historically, we have seen that as long as governments step in to enforce contracts, economic growth naturally occurs. However, let's look at a scenario assuming that contracts don't exist. Say you rent an apartment. You don't sign a lease with a landlord, but have a verbal agreement that you will live there for one year, and that if there are any maintenance issues, the landlord will take care of it. But let's say two months later, your apartment is overrun with roaches and mice. You tell your landlord, but he refuses to do anything about it, telling you that it's your problem. Without contract laws, there is nothing you can do but try to solve the problem yourself. Even if you had a signed lease with your landlord, if governments don't enforce the contract, it is worthless. Think of the government as insurance for when things go wrong. Without knowing that the government is there to step in, consumers are less likely to take risks or make big purchases. Number five, providing a weak general welfare system. Without a strong safety net for those struggling to meet basic needs, it is difficult for an economy to grow. A general welfare system creates a risk-sharing economy in which the threat of potential economic difficulties affecting any one person is protected by the majority. Think of it as insurance. Instead of having one person face a huge loss, a large number of people share the costs and barely notice. Let's say a government did not provide unemployment compensation, which is a benefit paid to people who have recently lost their job through no fault of their own. This can happen suddenly and unexpectedly. If this person didn't have any money saved up, they could quickly face eviction from their home or become unable to afford basic necessities, such as food, clothing, or health care. This would quickly create a scarcity mindset, as now not only would the newly unemployed person have to worry about finding another job, they would also have to worry about basic survival. In conclusion, governments sometimes hurt economic growth through overtaxation, overregulation or too little regulation, lack of investment in infrastructure, education and technology, a lack of enforcement of contracts, or having a weak general welfare system. With a broad overview of government involvement covered, let's now look at specific government action for better or for worse. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.